thank you, oh God, in advance, oh God, for what you're going to do on the day, oh God. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, to send your anointing in this place, oh God. Lord, we can't do anything without you. So, Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're going to do, oh God. Lord, we ask it all, oh God, in your son Jesus' name we pray, oh God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 It's a blessing Thank to be Jesus. in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Come on and give him glory. Yes, your name. We honor you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. It's raining outside, but how many have seeds in the ground? Hallelujah. That yes. God's watering. Yes. Come on, so we thank God for the rain. How many of us are struggling with the pollen? So we also thank God for the rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give him glory and honor and praise because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Come on, you say the Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be? Come on, whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I be afraid? Say it again. The Lord is. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Come on, whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I be Say, afraid? Say, I will wait. I will wait for you. Come on. Say, I will wait. I will wait on you. Say, while I'm waiting, I'm going to trust you, God. I will trust in you. Hallelujah. Say, I will trust you, Lord. I will trust in you. Come on, go back to the top. Say, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light and salvation. Come on, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I be afraid? Come on, declare it. The Lord is the Lord my light, my light salvation. and salvation. Come on, who? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I be afraid? Say, I will wait. I will wait on you. Come on, and while I'm waiting, I'm going to trust you. I will wait on you. Yes. Come on, lift it up. Say, I will trust you, Lord. I will trust in you. Hallelujah. Say, I will trust you. I will trust in you. Come on, so the next part says, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, you declare it. I will. I will remain confident in confident this. Confident yes, in this. I will, I will see. see. Come on. The goodness of the Lord. In the Lord. land of the living, I will remain. I will remain. Hallelujah. Confident. Confident in this. I will see. Thank you, Lord. The goodness of the Lord. Come on, declare it. Say, I will remain. I will remain. Confident in confident this. In Hallelujah. This. I, I will see. The goodness Come on, declare of it, the declare Lord. it, say, I will remain, I will remain confident, in, confident this. in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Last time, say, I will remain, I will remain confident, in, confident this. In, in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on now, if you believe that, give him praise. Give him glory. Come on, give him honor. We put all our faith and our hope and our trust in our everlasting God. Hallelujah. He's never lost a battle. He's never failed us. And he never will. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. Lift it up. Say, we set our hope. We set our hope on you. We set our hope. We set our hope on your life. 
power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Power in your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Come on, you say there is power. There is power in the name yeah. of Jesus. Come on, let me hear you say. Power in your name. Come on, shout it out loud. Say there is power there in the is name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, so much power in. Power in your name. Come on, say it again. There is power there in the is name. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power in. Power in your name. One more time. Say there is power there in the is name. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in Come on, your name. Say things change when we call. Things change when we call yes, you, Jesus. Come on, things change, things change when we call your name. Come on, say things change when we call you, Jesus. Things change when we call you, Jesus. Things change when we call your name. Come on, say things change when we call you, Jesus. 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 Things change
Let's give God a praise for the praise team. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. Uh, God is so, so good. Uh, can I get a witness? Is God good to anybody besides me today? Amen. I see some hands. God's good to a whole lot of people. Uh, God is good to a whole lot of people. And I just want him to know that I appreciate him so much, so much. Amen. Today is a day of praise and thanksgiving because God's been so good to us. Uh, God has blessed us so wonderful, so wonderful. He's just so wonderful. We have so much to thank God for. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. Uh, God is God is so, so good. Amen. Uh, how many of you got blessed all week this week? Amen. And let me see your hands if God bless you all week. Amen. Uh, it's a good thing to know where our blessings come from. Amen. Uh, some folks just think it's just something that they're doing. But uh, no, that's not the case. It's because of the grace and mercy of God. Amen. God is so good. And he keep on blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing. And we have to know where our blessings come from. I'm asking you to turn your Bibles to the book of First Thessalonians for uh, uh, scripture reference today, First uh, Thessalonians chapter number five. First Thessalonians chapter number five, and we're gonna begin uh, reading at verse number twenty-three. Verse number 23 and verse number 24. Verse number 23 and verse number 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Thank you, Jesus. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, uh, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Uh, it's a good thing to know that the Lord is always thinking about us. He has so many plans for us, and he thinks about us, and uh, he makes ways for us. So, uh, I want to talk today uh, uh, from uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse number 23 and 24. It's uh, important for us to know where our blessings come from, what they come for and where they come from. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. And uh, 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 I want to emphasize the point today that God has tools to perfect us, tools to make us holy as we go through these trials of life. Uh, there are things that we need in order to get through because the Bible says we are troubled on every side. So we have to know that God has tools for uh, making us what he called for us to be. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Uh, it, is, it is important 
for all of us to know that the Lord has plans for our success. How many of y'all believe that? God has plans for your and my success. He wants us to be successful, so he makes ways for us. He opened doors. Hallelujah. He pulled down strongholds. Hallelujah. And he make the high places come down where we can reach them and deal with them. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. I, I, as I think about uh, this uh, uh, lesson today, uh, the, the main point of this lesson is God has given us tools to make us what he's calling for us to be. Calling for, see, uh, uh, sometimes people will give you a task and won't give you nothing to do it with. Uh, ask you to cut the grass, but uh, uh, you don't have no lawnmower, don't have no sling bait, don't have nothing. Uh, ask you to sweep the floor, but no broom nowhere. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Uh, 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 this lesson points us to the fact that uh, we have many challenges in life. Uh, there are many, the Bible says, many afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them out of them all. You have to know whatever the Lord calls you to do, he's going to give you what you need in order to do the job. Can I get one amen on that? So uh, uh, God's tool for making us holy, and we're going to look at, uh, uh, just for a second or two, uh, the trials of life. Uh, sometimes uh, some trials come to help us and we don't even realize, make us strong, uh, to help us to get to where uh, he wants us to go. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. It's important for us to know that the Lord is a good God. And he don't ever forget that he made promises to us a long time ago. And he said in his word, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Can I get a witness in here? He said, never, never. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll be with you always through the uh, high places, through the low places, no matter what come our way, the Lord says, I am going to see you through. First Thessalonians chapter number 5. First Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse 23 and 24. Verse 23 and 24. First Thessalonians chapter number uh, 5, uh, Verse uh, 23 and 24. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray uh, that God, uh, your whole spirit and your uh, body uh, be uh, kept uh, blameless. Hallelujah. God wants us to live a life where we are going to be able to make it. How many of y'all believe that God has a plan for you to make it? Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. The Bible says uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous. God allows certain things to come into our life so that we can survive, so that we can make it. Uh, how many of y'all believe that God intends for you to make it? Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. He intends for you to make it. He intends for you to make it. And that's why the scripture says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, uh, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, faith is he that calleth you who also will do it. God expects some things from us. 
You know, it's a, a bad thing when somebody tell you, say, I want you to go out there and dig a hole for me three feet deep, uh, two feet wide. And they walk away. You say, well, they didn't give me no tools. How am I supposed to do this? God expects us to live up to his standards. And you know what he does? He gives us the things that we need in order to be successful. And I want to talk just for a little bit this morning about the tools that God used or give us to make us that holy, righteous person that he called us to be. Uh, it, you have to know that he won't ask you to do something and won't give you the tools to do what he's asking you to do. Uh, we understand that there are things that come our way. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver us out of them all. Uh, the prophet Isaiah says of the Lord, we are clay and you are potter. For all of us are the work of your hand. He's talking about God. We do what we do because of the grace of God. His ability to sustain us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Comparing God's skill with the skill of man, uh, Isaiah describes how he shapes believers so that they can increase uh, in their skills and ability and do the work that God has called them to do. Hallelujah. Some of the tools our Father uses to mold and perfect us. Hallelujah. I want to just talk to you just for a little bit today about uh, the things that the Lord gives us so that we can be successful. Uh, some of you, God gave you a job, so you have money to be able to pay your bills. Hallelujah. Put gas in your car. Hallelujah. Go from one place to the other. The prophet Isaiah uh, said of the Lord, we are clay, and you are our potter, and all of us are the works of your hand. We are all the works of his hand. So he's going to give us what we need, hallelujah, in order to get where he wants us to go. Comparing God's skills to the skills of a craftsman, Isaiah describes how he shapes believers so uh, they increasingly resemble the Savior. He gives us the skills. He gives us what we need in order to be uh, that person. Some of the tools our Father used to mold us and perfect us uh, uh, through his creation. I want to just talk today just for a few moments about uh, the things, three, uh, three or four things that God gives you in order that you can be successful. Somebody say successful. Uh, uh, some of the tools he gives us to mold us and perfect us, uh, his creation. Uh, and the things that he gave us. He gave us a Bible, number one. He gave us a Bible. Uh, Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, Sanctify them uh, in the truth. Thy word is truth. He said, I gave them the word. I gave you the word so you can be perfected. So you know what's right and wrong. John chapter 17 and verse number 17. As the Holy Spirit illuminate what we read and we are slowly transformed. What would we do without a Bible? We wouldn't have no directions. I do, but he gave us the Bible so we could read it and study it and walk by it and understand that this is what will transform us. So the first thing, I'm going to give you a couple things here, two or three things that I want you to consider why God gave it to you. God gave you his word, the Bible, so that it will help sanctify us, lead us into truth. That's why it's a very good thing to read your Bible. And listen to what he says. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. St. John 17 and 17. As the Holy Spirit illuminates us with what we read, we are slowly transformed. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. So the first thing I want you to hear today is that he gave us his word. 
Now, the second thing he gave us uh, is the church. Somebody say the church, yeah. A place to go. A place to learn. A place to develop. A place to worship. The church, as a part of the body of Christ, we learn God's ways from the pastors and teachers who have been called to minister. Uh, fellowship with one another is also a method that we use to sanctify each other. Hallelujah. So we have to understand that God called us to be holy, and he has given us. Don't ever think God gave you something, to, a job to do, and didn't give you the tools to do with. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. So he gave us the Bible. He gave us the word. That word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. The second thing he gave us is the church, a place to go, a place to, uh, uh, it's called the body of Christ, a place where we can listen to men and women of God teach us about what we are expected to do. Uh, the church is a place of fellowship where we can interact with one another, where we can encourage one another, where we can say to one another that we have to be accountable to one another. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. The third thing he gave us, and some, some of you may not understand this third example, uh, suffering. The Lord allows us to go through things that we might learn, that we might grow. There, 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 there are times that we go through something and say, you know what? I learned something. I learned I could get through that. I learned I can get through this. I learned how to get through this. I learned how to just let it go. I learned how to hold my peace. God allows some things to come to us because he wants us to learn how to not pay some things attention, how to know that this too will pass, how to know that he is going to make a way out of no way. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. He gave us the church, the body of Christ, where we can fellowship and have uh, that kind of relationship with one another. Uh, and we can learn from one another. We can talk to one another. We can lean on one another. And we can say, hey, my sister, my brother, tell me how do I get through this? How do I deal with this? Hallelujah. These are two. Some, some people think the Lord just let stuff come to you just to spank you or whip you. No, he wants us to learn. The Bible says it like this. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver us out of them all. He has a time. He has a way. He has a, 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 a condition because he wants us to know how to get through, and he wants us to be able to teach somebody else. You can get through that. Yeah, yeah. This too will pass. Uh, tomorrow about this time. Hallelujah. So he puts us, he gave us the Bible. And he says when he taught us about the Bible, he said, Jesus said uh, uh, for us to pray. He says, sanctify them in thy truth. He's praying, your word is true. He's saying to the Lord, uh, your word will sanctify them if they read it, if they allow it to be a part of them, if they allow the Holy Spirit to work slowly in them. And he gave us the church a place to go, a place to come where we can fellowship and uh, have fellowship and then go on back home or go do whatever you got to do. You ain't staying all day, but you are learning something. You can learn something. You say, I want to study that scripture a little more. I want to uh, uh, read over that a little more because I believe that God has something. There are times when God uh, point us to water scripture and we don't know why, but when we read it, we realize that God told me through the scripture, I'm going to get through this. He told me that many of the fixings of the righteous, he said, but God will deliver. He told me, hallelujah, don't fret yourself because even do it in due time, they're going to be cut down. God told me he has a way for us to succeed. Yeah. Somebody tell the Lord that. The church, somebody say the church. Okay. The third thing he gave us uh, was suffering. Somebody say suffering. What does that mean? Uh, he's trying to whip me or something? No. Yes. Times in our life where we need to know how to get through tough times. Hallelujah. Suffering. Painful circumstances teaches us how to trust God, how to lean on God, how to believe on God, how to be humble. There, there, there are sometimes 
uh, people think that when, when painful circumstances come, the only thing they're supposed to do is get angry and mad and fight. No, but sometimes the Lord wants you to know that he has a plan to get you through what you're going through. He has a plan to uh, show you how to deal with this because this type of person that you're dealing with ain't going nowhere. Matter of fact, they're in your family. They married your cousin or your uh, sister, brother, and you got to learn. So the Lord allows some things to come to us so we can learn how to trust God and know that he is going to deal with it. Somebody said in his own time. In his own time. So I submit to the Lord and say to the Lord, any way you bless me, I'll be set. You know, anything that comes to you, God has a plan for it. Can I get a witness? Uh, the Bible says, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver you out of them all. Hallelujah. <laughs> Suffering, painful circumstances teaches us how to trust God and depend on him and to be humble. Hallelujah. And to depend on God. Hallelujah. These difficulties teach us to have a kind of faith in God. Hallelujah. A greater maturity that says, God is working on me right now. God is doing something for me right now. And I feel myself getting stronger. I feel myself coming out of this. I feel things getting better. The Lord is forming us into a vessel of what? Honor. As he allowed us to go through something. And you know what? The interesting thing about it, there are people that are around you that God put in your environment for them to watch you and see how not to blow up about everything that go wrong. Uh, trust God and know that he is going to do it. Learn how to submit and say, not my will, but thy will. I'm going to submit to the Lord. I'm going to be humble uh, before the Lord. I'm going to depend on the Lord. I'm going to have faith in the Lord. I'm going to, hallelujah, tell the Lord, this too will pass. Trials, suffering, and tests are brought to my life to help me to grow, to help me to know that no problem, hallelujah, is too big for God. Nothing is too hard for the Lord to do. He can bring me out. He can get me out. But I got to learn to hold my peace. Because the way I used to handle it, every time something happened, I'd blow up. But, but, but uh, when you do that, it, it, the problems just keep coming back. And, and sometimes some people do it just to see you blow up. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. You have to know that there are uh, times when painful circumstances teach us how to be humble, teach us how to be submissive, teach us how to develop faith. My Lord will bring me out. Teach me spiritual maturity and refine my character. It teaches me that I don't have to worry about that. I will survive. Somebody say, I will survive. Now, let's, let's just look at, at, at uh, a part of this lesson here. Uh, the trials of life that come our way, the trials of life. Uh, uh, sometimes we wonder why God let bad things happen to good, pe good people. Uh, why, what is God trying to teach us? He's trying to teach us, one of the things he's trying to teach us, that this too will what? Pass. If I trust God, if I stand on God, hallelujah, if I uh, take him at his word, hallelujah, God teaches us because, listen to this, a part of what God is doing in your life He's using you as an example to somebody else to show them how to get through. Do you realize that God uses you in the lives of so many people? And, and they, they say, I don't know how she took that. If they had did that to me, if they had said that to me, I'd have been uh, going upside somebody's head. But the, 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 the Lord will make you a witness to somebody. That God is good, that God is a way maker, that God will bring the high places down, that God will work out things for you. If you hold your peace, if you pray and ask God, hallelujah, because we wonder sometimes why some things happen to us. And uh, the reason is that God is preparing us for what? To be an example. 
to be an example, to be able to say to yourself, I'm not uh, going to let that person uh, pull my string and cause me to go off and cause me to act up, cause me to act any kind of way. Hallelujah. The trials of life, these things come sometimes to make us an example because you'd be surprised how many people watch you and look at you and say, you know what? That person uh, 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 make everybody angry, but they don't even bother her. She uh, ignore it. She lets it go. And, and she says to herself that uh, uh, I'm not going to let them spoil my day. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. I'm not going to let them mess my day up. Uh, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to stand on Hallelujah, his word. First uh, Peter 3 and 9 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again, uh, born again to a living hope. I have hope that whatever's going on, I'm going to get through this. And I'm going to be through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead as an inheritance. God has a plan to see you through it. Some of you need to recognize that God is using you to teach some other folks how to survive, to teach some folks how to get through, to teach some folks how, how not to go off, to hold their peace, and don't let people steal your joy. The old, old saying is don't let folks have the power to pull your string. Ignore them and go on because folks will laugh at you. If they can pull your string and make you make a joke of you, but you have to know that God has a plan, a plan for your life. The Bible said, "Many are afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them out of them all." God has you as an example. Somebody tell the Lord, "Thank you." And while He is refining you, He's delivering somebody else. Because listen to this. What God has for you is for you. Can I get a witness? And, and sometimes the same people that, that try to make your life miserable, you'll find out that they are one that come to you for help. The, the scripture says it like this. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them out of them all. How many of y'all believe that? God will deliver you out of them. And what he does, he refines us through this process. He teaches us how to not follow some things up, how to say this too will pass, how to tell the Lord thank you anyway, how to be able to be an example to somebody uh, and to come to understand that they thought they were going to stop me. But God is faithful. See, I learned the faithfulness of God by trusting him, by standing on his word, by believing in him, and by submitting to him. Hallelujah. Understanding that sometimes there are sufferings that come into the life of a believer for the purpose of letting the believer know that God will make a way. The scripture says like this, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them out of what? Them all. God will. Are you blessed today? Do you know that God has a plan to see you through? Scripture says it like this. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. If God be for you, who can be against you? Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. The trials come. And you know, a, another reason that I want you to hear before I close God allows us to go through some trials so that we can teach others. So that we can teach others. You don't have to let that bother you. Ignore it. Instead of crying, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Understand that God is teaching me how to let it go. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. God told me to tell somebody here today that the trials come to refine you. Trials come to make you stronger. The trials come 
for you to be an example. And God has a purpose because he has called you to be an example. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for a deeper faith. Uh, thank you for a, a deeper maturity. Thank you for refining my character through my trials. Because some things don't bother me like they used to bother me. God, I found out that you are a deliverer. And you have a purpose for my life. Somebody say my life. And you are preparing me to be a blessing to somebody else. Now, Lord, bless me to remember the scripture that we started out with, one of the scriptures. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver us out of them all. Sister Lauren, you going to give us a song? Would you give us a song, please? I want to give you three weapons as I close, as we get ready to lift our offering, and, and then communion. Well, it's not communion time. No, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, three weapons that we have, three twos to make us that person that God wants us to be. The first one is the Bible. If we read, it, the scripture says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is true. Uh, the second weapon is the church, a place of refuge we can go. The third uh, word is suffering. Suffering, God teaches us and he leads us to show others how they too can and will be uh, ready to do the things that God has called them to be. Amen. As we prepare now, uh, We prepare to lift our offering now. I want you to uh, remember God is a cheerful giver, and he wants us to be a cheerful giver. So I, let me pray, and, and then we're going to lift our offering, and we're going to let you go in a little bit. Amen. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to come and understand that you have twos for making us holy. Bless us, keep us, guide us, and direct us. And bless us to know that you created us to win. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. I want everybody to say, I am a winner. Amen. Now, this time we receive our offering. Amen. Of the arrows by day From the hands of my enemies I can stand my ground with the Lord on my side for the snares they have said will not succeed no weapon formed against me shall prosper 
it won't work no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work thank you Jesus Father thank you for this day thank you for preparing us Thank you for letting us know that you have a plan to make us holy in spite of all the things that come against us. Now, Father, bless the offering, bless the givers today, and bless us to adapt some of these tools that you have given us so that we can live a holy life and that the trials that come our way will not destroy us. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Now, Lord, bless us to walk by faith and not by sight. Bless us to know that you have a plan to see us through. Thank you, Lord, and bless the hands that have given. And we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we th thank you for this day. Now, Lord, bless us for the rest of this day to have peace, to have joy, and to have the love of God in our heart that we might walk by faith and not by sight. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Everybody say, I love the Lord. I, love the Lord. I want you to go to two people and tell two people that God loves you. God loves you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And we pray that something was said that will be a blessing to you. Because God has a purpose for your life. God bless you. God bless you.